Okay, so I wanted to um, record a few things I was thinking about today. Um, it's a Thursday. It's sunny, almost, almost mostly sunny, which if you're anywhere around here, you know that that is a very rare occurrence. I've got to say it's kind of nice. It feels invigorating. Um, it's only going to last a couple more hours, and then it's probably going to rain for another week. But hey, spring is coming. I'm hopeful. Hopefully y'all are doing well. Um, I am still in the midst of recording what I believe is going to be the last um, installment of the What is Man series. I think it's going to be concluded on part five if I can stay on course and actually get that done. By the time this lands on the website, that will probably already be recorded and posted, so it will become old news. But whatever the case, I was just praying this morning as I was driving out to work um, doing some self-examination. Just There's been a lot on the table um, in my house and in our fellowship here. Um, just a lot of, just a number of things um, that have just demanded a lot of time and prayer and, and contemplation on matters, really needing to hear the Lord. And I just really wanted to kind of scale things back this morning and do some introspection, I guess. And just really examine myself and just kind of communicate with the Lord about myself. Um, and ask if there was really anything in me that um, I might just feel stirred about, convicted about, corrected about, you know, anything along those lines. And uh, I just started talking and basically landed on a couple things. And I thought I'd just kind of record them and... and maybe revisit that a little bit and, and put it in the public forum to maybe encourage someone beyond myself. Um, because I believe that, that this is something we all do and that we can all sit back and really examine and uh, ask God to really help us with. Um, of course, there's an immeasurable amount of those things that would fit underneath those those uh needs in our life. Um, but basically this morning I was just, as I said, kind of reflecting on just different things in my life presently. Um, and I, and I thought about, I don't even remember how I landed there specifically at the outset, but I was thinking about how I saw a friend over the weekend that I hadn't seen, uh, for several months. And, you know, as, as it always goes, uh, the question was posed to me. So, so what's what's new? What's going on? And uh, my response was, "Is just I'm just going to say it. it was just inappropriate. It was inappropriate in the sense of it wasn't accurate. Like, in summary, I said something along the lines of like, well, nothing, nothing new. Um, you know, things are going along the same as always. Whatever. Now I didn't say it all ho hum, but I just said it kind of factually." Um, boring, like, well, you know, I'm obviously work is going and trying to keep some calves alive through the winter. And I'm on the tractor moving hay bales now and then and trying to train up my son in the way that he should go. You know, I'm, (laughs) you know, I'm just, just living life. And have you ever, (laughs) have you ever, as you're speaking, have the thought of, what am I saying? Does anybody else ever do that? Like in the middle, I mean, your mouth is moving, your own mouth is moving. And, but something inside of you is saying, what are you even talking about? That's not even true. That's not even right. Well, that happened to me the other day in that conversation. I felt convicted as, I mean, as the words are coming out of my mouth, I was like, this isn't, this isn't right. This isn't, what's going on in my life. My life isn't about that right now. I did, yes, it's about training my son. Yes, it's about teaching him and instructing him in this present season of a seven-year-old life. Yes, I'm not negating that or, or casting it off in any way, but I guess the theme of my response was, well, nothing. You know, same old thing. And that is just not true. And so I was just thinking that through this morning about my uneasiness with why I said that in the first place and then 
just what that meant. What did that say? And like, what? I already know. I already know what I could have said. I already know what I should have said. I said it as I was saying what I shouldn't have said. That's the problem with humanity. <laughs> but you can, I'll take it all on myself today. That's my problem. And so I got to thinking about um, this book that I'm haphazardly reading. I'm a horrible reader. Um, that's no secret. It takes me forever to get through a book, if I get through a book at all. That's just the way I am. I don't know. Um, I can't remember the title right now. I know the theme, of course. The theme is just reflecting back on the first, second, third century church and the familial relational dynamics within the church. And if you listen to this podcast, you're probably like, oh gosh, here he goes again. Oh geez, the corporate church reality. Okay, Joel, we know. It's not individual-based Christianity. We've heard you. I know. I'm not going to go down that route. It's okay. Don't be nervous. Don't be afraid, loner. Don't be afraid, individual, me and Jesus guy. It's okay. Stick with me. I'm not going there today. Or am I? Oh, I'm just teasing. Anyway, <laughs> so I was thinking about that book, and it just examines like the culture of that time and how familial people were in general. I mean, outside of the church, culture had different connotations than this world we know, as it, of course, still does in other cultures today. But like specifically, where the church was conceived, where the church originated, was into a people that already had an understanding of living within the dynamic of a shared life. I mean, they just already had that established. And so when they came into the church, they really had to exchange what already was for a different version of what they already knew. I mean, they had to forsake their natural family, if necessary, and join themselves with the spiritual family. And they were very much the same, very similar. And Of course, in Western culture, as somebody born, in, born into this generation um, in the United States, we, of course, are, are absolutely void of this reality. Um, we don't know familial, natural family um, and groups and relationships. And so when we come in to the church... Well, of course, well, we're not just going to be a family now. We don't even know what being a family is in the broader context. And so I was just thinking about that book. But specifically, within that book, he, the author talks about how we define who we are when people would ask us a question, you know, like, you know, however it comes out, whether it's tell me a little bit about yourself or you know, so who are you or whatever. They're basically asking like, so, you know, what's your life about? Why are you, why are you here? What do you do? And he examines how in Western culture, we primarily fall back upon our vocation. Who we are is often just what we do. It may be our hobbies. It may be where we live. It may be where we're from. It may be primarily, first and foremost, what we do for a living. What we do to get paid. <laughs> and that's just really weird when we step back from our normal culture, where that's very normal and acceptable and understandable, and just really examine that at the outset of like, isn't that a strange way to explain who I am? Is to say that I'm a I'm a man who runs a high-speed buffer on cars for dealerships, and I've been doing this 21 years. I'm a small business owner, and, um, you know, I, is that who I am? Is that who I am? I mean, is that really what defines me? And even, like, where I'm from or, or what I've done, you know, as I referenced in, in a... Um, in an episode a, a week or two ago about how I, I was in the mode of speaking about something I don't even remember what. 
And I found myself, and I caught myself and started laughing about how I realized that even in me this far removed from religion, like religious order within the confines of an institution organization, like I still realize out of a talking point that I've still found and maybe perhaps still now, still a couple weeks later, but after examining that, there's still something in me that's like disproportionate in regards to my success based on things I've done, my, my accomplishments. And in direct relation to what I'm referencing is the other day I referenced that because I had been a youth pastor for several years at two different churches, I therefore was seen and without question believed to be a godly man. And how foolish that is. How ridiculous that is from where I sit today to look back upon my life and what I was doing and who I was then. But because of my accomplishments and because of the criteria that I was within, I had credibility. I had spiritual credibility, which is very scary. And so we, we put these things on ourselves to brand us as something, to define us. Our accomplishments. And if we're not careful, that can really override truth and and who we really are and who we should strive to be. Because if I find comfort and peace and purpose in being a youth pastor, what, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, well, what about now? You know, who am I now? If I had gone to seminary, which of course I didn't, or if I was a lead pastor, or if I was a missionary, or if I got a degree, or if I was this or this or this, you know, it's like somehow that feeds something in us. It feeds that humanity, that first Adam taint that desires credibility. And it desires to be proven as somebody of value, someone of worth, through performance-based activities, which, of course, we could easily put right into the box of fleshly endeavors. Of course. And so the question that I was having for myself this morning that, again, came out of that question about, what have you been up to, Joel? Was my response was primarily natural. It was primarily according to things that I've just been doing in this natural world that I promote all the time of being a vapor. Set our eyes on things above, our mind on things above, our thoughts, our intentions on things above, right? What is that? That's a bald eagle flying right in front of me. That is so stinking awesome. That thing flew over my house a couple weeks ago, and I haven't seen it since. That is so cool. All right, I'm a little, I'm a little distracted. I love living here. Have I said that before? Okay, back on point. Um, maybe I'm, I'm like legitimately distracted now. Um, so <laughs> what I was saying is our identity. We have this identity crisis, and I guess I'm just going to get straight to my point because I can't talk forever today. In answering that question, my conviction was, this is what my answer should have been. Hey, Joel, uh, what have you been up to, man? What's been going on? Oh, man, let me tell you. I have been practicing how to be a spiritual man. I have been trying to train myself to not see my brothers according to their flesh. I've been trying to train my son how to have a yielded heart of obedience unto his mommy and daddy so that he can yield to his creator one day. I've been encouraging a brother to not be fearful. I've been encouraging him to rise above what his circumstances demand him respond to in the natural and to be a spiritual man. I've been telling my wife that she has the opportunity to believe and trust in the Lord to lead me into a place of 
leading our home under the lordship of Jesus Christ. And he's trying, he, the Lord, is trying to teach me how to love my wife and give myself to her, for her, just like he did for the church. And on and on and on and on. That should have been my answer. Now, we could go through a million reasons of why it was not. Well, am I timid? Uh, Yeah, probably. In measure, for sure. But really, it just boils down to like, I don't know if this is like, can you just, can you just respond with, hey, how you doing? With stuff like that? Like, shouldn't we have some time together? Shouldn't we talk or pray or, shoot, I don't know, you know, have a little warm-up session first? I mean, can you just say, how you doing? And say, all right, buckle your seatbelt. I'm about to tell you everything the Lord's doing in my life right now. And I can't put it on the other person of like, well, I'm just not sure he would receive that. No, it's not about that. I can't blame anyone but myself. It's my fault. It's not anyone else's fault. It's my fault. So it's complicated, isn't it? Why we do the things we do. Why we act the way that we act. But I had to ask myself that question this morning. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of answering it. I'm not afraid of allowing the Lord to teach me. Goodness. It's a full-time job. Thankfully, the Lord can be in all places and at all times and never sleeps nor slumbers. That's why. It's because of me and all my problems he has to help me with. <sighs> And so I guess my, my, my train of thought is this. Who, in, in this study of what is man and, our, and like reclaiming our purpose, right? All right, let's, let's boil this down to the individual reality. Like, this is where it is okay to be individual, okay? Individual, lady. <laughs> it's okay to be individual, you hear me say that? In this way, in this approach to things. Like, Lord, what is it in me? That causes me to respond to things according to the natural, first and foremost. And like, do I glean any kind of satisfaction and um, identity that's just in my own accomplishments? Like, is, is what really makes me who I am based upon that I can make a car shiny? Like my vocation? <laughs> I mean, is, is it really? Is that all my life adds up to be? No. So why would I respond with anything like that? That's not who I am. That's not what I do. That's not what I give myself to. And so as we think about these things of like really assessing who we are, And what fuels us? What defines us? I'm an artist. I'm a musician. I'm a hunter. I'm a fisherman. I'm a dancer. I'm a preacher. You know, what? whatever. I mean, do we even know really in our heart what we believe is our identity? And may we start to move further away from these natural labels and successes and monikers and accomplishments based solely upon performance-based realities of what we have done, what we've accomplished. Look at what I've done. Look at me. Look at how awesome I am. That's not, I mean, I'm thinking right now of all these things Paul had said. Paul never said that. He never said it from that place. He said, I'm I'm nothing. I consider everything I know garbage, people. And I knew a lot is what he had the right to say. They knew what he knew. (laughs) Wait a minute, Paul. Wait, are are you serious? You? Persecutor of the followers of Jesus, keeper of the law, schooled one, 
You consider all of that garbage? Wow, you have my attention, right? So may we be like that. May we adopt that. May we adopt it into our lives to be a people who literally define ourselves first and foremost within ourselves, that that is a grounded reality of this is who we believe we really are. Really, really, really. And then may that start to come out of our mouth when given an opportunity. Who are you? Well, let me tell you. Perhaps we need to preface it first with, are you really asking? (laughs) And if we're convinced, yes, they are. Then we have the confidence to say, to the, the confidence to speak out of a spiritual man reality. I'm a regenerated man in Christ. I used to be in the dominion of darkness. And Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, came and died and ruled and reigned and ascended and sent His Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit indwells me and now I've been transferred to a kingdom of light. I should be imprisoned and in shame and in, and in like the pits of hell on earth. But I've been redeemed and purchased and restored and made into some new creation that I never, ever, ever deserved. That's who I am. But first we have to know it. We have to be informed of that reality according to the scriptures and from the testimony the power within it. And we have to believe it when we hear it. It has to be aligned with faith that yes and amen, that is true. Whether or not I feel it or not, I do believe it. I choose to take it in and believe it and believe it again and believe it again, not based on whether or not I feel like that's true. And then I have to allow it to become my new identity. I have to allow it to be permeating all of who I am. And then it will come out as a living testimony. It'll be a testimony that's alive. That's why the gospel is is like a seed. It has the ability, it has been given the innate ability to reproduce, just like we saw in the early church, which, which grew exponentially. Why? Because it was something alive within the hearts of men. And we've dumbed down the gospel and we've made it going to the mall with little pamphlets on how to share the gospel in five easy steps to a sinner. And tracks we leave on urinals and bathrooms at gas stations. And we've made it something that's not living. We've made it into a formula that if I say this, and if that person listens and believes just enough and then recites it back to me, we have somehow been duped to believe that we are a testimony. And I'm not here to say none of that works or that none of that is valid, but I'm saying, what about the the word of the testimony? What about the power behind the living testimony of a regenerated man? And I think it would be be good of us. It would be a responsible thing as those who have taken on the name of Christ. It would be good for us to sit back and be sure that we have a testimony. Because my testimony is not that I said a prayer in 1983. That's not my testimony. My testimony is not that I was regenerated and recreated and supernaturally remade in 2006. That's not my testimony. My testimony is what is ongoing in me every single day of my life. An ongoing living reality of the regenerative work of God in a man my sanctification and leaving behind my old patterns and ways from my old father Adam 
and no longer living as myself, but as Christ. I have a, I have a now testimony. We have got to have a now testimony. Because I am, I am assured. I have seen. I'm not the poster child for it. I'm not the best example. By any means. But I've seen what something alive versus something rehearsed, recited, and predictable produces. And they are not the same. They are not the same. They do not produce the same fruit. So may we be a genuine people who have a now testimony that's established not in the performance of men, not in our abilities or our accomplishments or even what we do or what we've done or what we did 20 years ago. If your testimony, if, if for your testimony of the, of the work of God in your life has to go back to 1972, I'm telling you, brother, there's a problem. That's a problem. The scriptures talk about our salvation is ongoing. We are being saved. It is an ongoing process, friends. So may we give ourselves to the process so that we have a testimony that's the now testimony of God in a man. I praise the Lord that that is even on my radar. That it's no longer about just leaving behind sin and not being a a man that's riddled by his flesh. Our goal is not just to be less sinful when we go to bed than when we got up in the morning. The scriptures talk about the elementary things. We've got to get these elementary things. We've got to graduate from the elementary things and move deeper. And so may you be encouraged by that. That that's what we've been invited into and that's what we can do when we are empowered by the Spirit of God. So have a good day and I'm going to check out. Thank you.